Hi, welcome back to Anthropology 276. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the basics of the acoustics behind phonetics. Um, before you look at this presentation video, it would be helpful if you have already looked at the reading material on the uh, Varieties of English website that talks about the uh, place and manner of articulation of the human voices. Here I'm going to give you a little technical background of how is it that we make sounds at all. So basically uh, a sound is composed of air molecules spreading throughout space. Uh, and how air molecules uh, move through space is by uh, becoming compressed and expanded. So the air molecules spread through space through compression and rarefaction. And this pattern of compression and rarefaction results in what is referred to as a sine wave. So what are the properties of a sine wave? Well, a sine wave consists of a frequency, which is how many times per second does a wave repeat itself. And this is measured in terms of hertz, or HS. So if you say that a sine wave has 440 hertz, it means that it repeats itself 440 times per second. Another property of a sine wave is the amplitude. Amplitude basically means how loud a sound is. And this is denoted by decibels, dB. Um, all right, that's for now. And Another property of a sine wave is what is referred to as the phase, um, which is where where does at what point does a sine wave start? And phase does not have an equivalent on our perception. Like we do not perceive phase in the way that we perceive loudness, uh, amplitude as loudness, or um, Oh, and frequency, the way that we perceive frequency is by the pitch of a sound. So um, how low a sound is or how high a sound is, it all depends on the frequency or pitch. These are some examples of sine waves. And each of these three graphs contain two sine waves that are different in only one respect. So, um, so the top graph shows two sine waves. And on the y-axis um, is the amplitude. And the x-axis is the time uh, where the um, um, the time the length of time that the uh, frequency kind of um, uh, continues and and a cycle is uh, defined by where it starts. So here it starts at point zero and it goes up and then turns around, goes back and then go comes back to its original point. So from this zero to this zero represents one cycle. And for this uh, sine wave, for this wave, um, uh, it has a cycle of a little bit over 0 0.3 seconds. You can, as you can see in this first graph, the only difference between the, the uh, graph with the uh, hard lines and the graph with the dotted lines is, is the amplitude. Everything else is the same. It has the same phase, which means that it bo they both start at the same point. It has the same frequency. They both have a cycle that uh, a cycle of a little bit over 0 0.3 seconds. But the uh, dotted the dotted 
sine wave has a long, larger amplitude that the, uh, than the uh, sine wave with the uh, hard lines. The second graph shows two sine waves that have different frequencies. As you can see, the, uh, the sine wave with the hard lines has a cycle of a little bit over 0.3 seconds, but the second uh, sine wave with the dotted lines is a little bit faster. So it has a, a cycle of um, about 0.25 seconds, so they have different frequencies. And here it shows that um, uh, the uh, sine wave with the hard line has a frequency of 3 hertz, and the one with the uh, dotted lines has a frequency of 4 hertz. So it has 4 cycles per second, and you can see that here. You have 1, 2, 3, 4 in one second. Alright, the third a graph shows two sine waves with different phase and that just may, means that they start at different points so whereas um, the graph the sine wave with the uh, hard lines starts at zero amplitude the sine wave with the uh, with the uh, dotted line starts at an amplitude of one decibel all right so now we have so we have we have a little idea of what sine waves are. Now the cool thing about sine waves is that we can add different sine waves together to come up with a complex sine wave. So here in this example you have four different kinds of sine waves with different frequencies. And if you just bunch them up, you come up with a uh, sine wave that looks like this. It doesn't look as pretty as the individual sine waves, but notice how they still have some kind of uh, a uh, definite pattern. So even though the uh, hills look kind of inconsistent, they all have the same shape and they all have the same kind of duration. They have the same cycle. And... Uh, and okay so we have learned about sine waves and uh, simple sine waves and complex sine waves and I'm pretty sure you are dying to know how these sine waves sound like so let's uh, listen for at some examples I used a uh, sound analysis program called Pratt to create some artificial sounds this one is a simple sine wave with a 400 hertz frequency as you can see the wave is very even and let's see how it sounds all right so that's a basic sine wave that is 400 hertz um, all right, so let me, uh, I created another sine wave where I combined two sine waves, one of 400 hertz and another of 800 hertz, and here you see that the wave looks kind of different, but it still shows the same pattern repeating itself. So let's see how it sounds. All right. So that's a uh, s s complex sine wave. And uh, I made another wave that combined four different sine waves into one sound.